internet left speechless by 11 year olds math question impossible it doesn't matter how gifted you are at math this children's homework question is bound to leave you baffled just like the millions of puzzled internet users who can't comprehend it so goes the latest breaking news report from newsweek.com this problem was shared by nice person on reddit who said that it was a homework problem for his 11 year old son and instead of not being able to comprehend it you can probably tell exactly where this is going we have some context we have a pie chart we have some questions what's the big deal well 20 children were asked where they would like to go on a trip and the pie chart shows the results we see that 65 percent of the children said they want to go to the theme park we're not given percents for zoo and theater and the first question is what percentage of children chose zoo the first obvious issue is that we can't really answer this question with the information that's given all we know is the percent of students who chose theme park we're not told that the same number of children chose zoo and theater but i guess we're just supposed to assume it and since there are only 20 children total if one more child chose zoo than theater then this angle that cuts that sector of the circle would have to be 18 degrees bigger than the theater angle and that doesn't really look to be the case. They do look equal, so okay, let's just assume that they are equal. However, the primary issue with this problem is more troubling. It's easy enough to say if 65% of children chose the theme park, well, that leaves 35% of children left, which must be divided evenly among the zoo and the theater, and so the answer to this question must be half of 35%. And half of 35% is 17.5%. Now, does this answer make sense? Well, this is a pretty hard problem, so before we write it down, we should probably do a quick check. Let's just make sure the numbers work out. We were told that there were 20 children total, and 65% of those 20 children comes out to 13. So that's the number of children that chose the theme park. Of course, that leaves seven children remaining that must be divided evenly into the zoo and the theater, making up 17.5% in each slice. But seven isn't an even number, and so can't be divided into two equal whole number parts. So we see the big issue, and so begin some easy jokes. Sorry kids, the pie chart says one of you is getting sawn in two. Newsweek shows us a handful of other amusing reactions to this issue. One comment reads, the 0.5 children shall merge together to be a new child. Another one said, In my academic career, it was made glaringly clear that thou shall not use pie charts because of their ambiguity, with which I would disagree somewhat. I mean, a pie chart done well can be a great way to visualize data. And apart from the contextual issues of this being involved in a bit of a nonsensical problem, it's a solid pie chart. It doesn't fall into some of the easy mistakes like making it a 3 3D pie chart just because that looks cool, but it adds perspective which is completely unnecessary and actually harmful to getting an accurate visualization of the data. Or since a pie chart is used for categorical data, using a pie chart when you have too many categories, that's also not a great idea. But this pie chart, no big issues like that. Another commenter pointed out how it doesn't actually ask us for the numbers, it just asks for the percentage. So just finding the percentage, you wouldn't encounter the song children and half issue. But that just begs the question of why the total number of children was given in the first place, because based on the questions here, it's not relevant information at all. And all it does is make the problem harder to answer, because if you check your percentage answer, the number does not make sense. So this begs, I would say, two simple questions. How could the problem be simply changed so that this issue doesn't occur? And is it at all possible that the problem actually doesn't have any issue to begin with, you just need to widen your perspective and expand your mind. Firstly, the simple modification to the problem would be to double the counts. If we double it to 40 children, then 65% will still work out to a nice whole number, and the odd number of children remaining, since everything's been doubled, this will now be an even number remaining. Thus, it would make sense to divide that remaining 
remaining number of children into two equal slices. In particular, if we've doubled the number of children to 40, 65% of that is 26. And then the 17.5% in the zoo and theater makes sense, because 17.5% of 40 is 7, that would have chosen zoo, and same for theater. So if there are 40 children, there wouldn't have been an issue with these percents and the numbers would work out fine. But maybe we're just reading the question wrong, because it says 20 children were asked where they would like to go on a trip. Well, it's easy to believe that many of the children would be happy going to a theme park or a zoo. Or maybe a child would be happy going to any of these options. We're not asked how this survey was actually conducted. Maybe each child had multiple choices. So let's explore this possibility. Maybe each child could choose any of the options that interested him. A child could vote for one option or two options or all three options. So they each have up to three votes. Then since we're told there are 20 children total, the highest number of possible possible votes would be 60 if every child voted for all three of the options. That's the maximum. So now when we look at the pie chart, we're thinking maybe these slices don't add up to the total number of children who each selected one option. Maybe the slices all add up to the total number of votes that were cast by 20 children who all had up to three votes to place. Now remember, we want the percentages to work out to whole numbers, which which narrows down the possibilities quite a bit because we need 65% of the total number of votes to be a whole number. Remember that percent means out of 100. Since 65%, which is 65 over 100, reduces to 13 over 20, the only total numbers of votes that would work out to whole numbers here would be multiples of 20. If there were 20 votes total and 65% of those votes were for the theme park, that would mean 13 votes were placed for the theme park. That makes sense, but as we know, it wouldn't work out for the zoo and the theater. If 17.5% of the votes were for the zoo, well, that doesn't make sense because 17.5% of 20 votes total isn't a whole number, and you can't cast half a vote. But just like we're able to eliminate that fractional child problem by doubling the number of children, we could eliminate the fractional vote problem by doubling the number of votes. If there were 20 votes total, that would mean that every child voted for exactly one thing, even though he could have voted for multiple things. But maybe there were 40 votes total, in which case there are no fractional votes to be worried about. Could this have been the actual intention of the problem, if collectively the 20 students cast 40 votes, that would mean 7 votes were placed for the zoo, 7 for the theater, and 26 for the theme park. If each child can vote for all three of these options, then these numbers could make sense. Except, unfortunately, for this one. This is a whole number, but now it's running into a different problem, which is that we only have 20 children. Yes, each child can vote for up to three options, but they can't vote for the same option multiple times. So if we have 20 children, which is what the problem says originally, and we're trying to make that work, well, 20 children can't vote 26 times for the same option. Now remember, the total number of votes needs to be a multiple of 20 in order for the 65% to work out to a whole number. We've seen though that 20 doesn't work, and now we've seen that 40 votes doesn't work either. That means the last remaining option is the maximum possible of 60 votes. Sadly though, that can't possibly work either, because if every child voted for all three options, well then of course every one of these slices would have to be a third of the circle, because every child's happy with any of the three attractions. So sadly, even if we try to stretch our imaginations to make this problem possible, the numbers still don't work out. Lastly, I'll give my sympathy to the teacher who either assigned this from a resource book that they weren't expecting to have such an oversight or they made the problem themselves in a hurry and either screwed up their checking process or just didn't check this one. Imagine a teacher always trying to be very careful when assigning and creating homework and then this one that just has a small issue becomes a news story. <laughs> but as the father who Newsweek so bravely interviewed said, 
Uh, he said, I think it's had a positive impact on most of the Reddit users who have seen it, and I'm pleased about that. And frankly, I am too. If you're a math teacher, you can't hope for more than to have a positive impact on Reddit users. Anyways, if you like this video, consider joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to all sorts of fun videos and help me continue to talk about math. Let me know in the comments if you had any questions, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and untucked the table If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet Faded Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so